In this video, I will illustrate you the functioning of the simple calculator example as, that I have developed, as the goal will be that you make uh, several extensions to it and also provide unit tests for it and do quality analysis over this application. Okay, so let me just uh, recap by taking the main class and just running it so that you can actually see that we have the behavior of a simple calculator where in which you can provide simple arithmetic expressions that take as input uh, some operation, some operational integers plus minus division or multiplication. Uh, for example, here we take a plus with three integer numbers and we get 12 or the subtraction of two integer numbers or even complex expressions. The way to do this is to first create arbitrary expressions and we can print the expression uh, which is just showing the, the value of the expression itself. Then we can evaluate the expression to compute its result. To do this, we make use of a calculator. So this is the calculator class, which given an expression prints the result of the expression, uh, or it can print the result using more verbose details, like also showing the depth of the expression, the number of operations contained in the expression, or the number of primitive values contained in the expression and we can evaluate the expression by simply computing its value by sending the method compute to the expression itself. Uh, rather than showing you uh, the entire code by going over each class separately, I think it's easier to show this by looking at the UML class diagram that can be generated from the code. So we can generate a diagram from the code as follows. And here we see the actual uh, diagram that has been generated. I will just provide all details about this diagram. So essentially we have a cal calculator that can print arbitrary expressions and it can evaluate expressions. What are expressions? We have an expression class, which is a, an expression is something that can be computed we can compute the result of an expression, we can count the depth of an expression, we can count the number of operations in an expression, and we can count the number of primitive values, primitive numbers contained in the expression. Uh, expression is not a class, but an interface, an interface that is implemented by two classes, uh, one concrete class, my number, and one abstract class, operation. Uh, you can not see in the visual notation that it's an abstract class, but we can see it here. It's an abstract class operation. Okay, so uh, a number is the simplest type of expression. What is a number? A number in our case is just only integer numbers. So a number is just a way of encapsulating an integer value inside some class that allows us to do different calculations. We can compute the value of the number, which would be simply returning the integer value. We can count the depth. We can uh, also convert a number to string if we want to print the results on the screen or we want to manipulate uh, the results using some string uh, function. We can verify if two numbers are equal and uh, of course if you redefine equals from the Java uh, object you also have to implement a hash code. So that's the class my number and then an expression can also be built of uh, arithmetic operations. So uh, here, uh, any type of arithmetic operation, there is four different subclasses of this uh, abstract class operation, plus for addition, divides for subtraction, times for multiplication, and minus for subtraction. The essential part of all of these operations is defined in the operation class. The symbol used to represent the operation is represented in the class symbol, so this would be plus or, or the multiplication sign, or the division sign, or the subtraction sign. Neutral, that's a neutral element of the operation. So for uh, addition, zero is the neutral value. For multiplication, one is the neutral value. Uh, then we also use some uh, uh, enumeration notation. We use different notations for arithmetic expressions. We can use the prefix, infix, or postfix notation. That's the reason why here, for example, you see this is an expression in infix notation, 
uh, this is an expression in postfix notation and here we see an expression in prefix notation so it depends on where we will put the operation in front of the parameters in the middle uh, of all parameters or at the end of all parameters uh, apart from this uh, we have each operation needs a method to say how to compute this operation so for plus this operation will simply do the addition of two numbers for division it should be the division of two numbers and so on if, if we look at this java class structure it looks extremely simple maybe something that uh, is important to show because it's not immediately visible the diagram notation uh, from this plugin of IntelliJ doesn't show all the details of UML diagrams but actually this is an implementation of the famous composite design pattern uh, as we can see here an operation can contain different sub operations and this at many different uh, levels so we can have an arbitrary level of uh, parentheses and sub expressions we can see this here because an operation is actually composed of a list of arguments and these arguments are lists of expression so every operation can contain other expressions which can again be operations or they can be primitive numbers so this provides you a little bit an overview of what the code will be doing if you want i can go over uh, the code maybe by just showing a concrete example of the, my number class and and maybe one of the operations so let's start with the code of my number uh, so how is a number defined it has a primitive value of type integer to construct a number you simply uh, pass the value that uh, will be encoded in the number to compute a number you just return its value the depth of an expression of type number it's a primitive expression so the depth will be defined as zero there is zero operations included in a number there is exactly one number included in a number uh, to convert the number into a string we simply take the integer value and convert it into a string and two numbers are equal uh, using the typical by overriding the equals method of java so a number is equal always to itself a number is not equal to any other object that is not of the same type my number and if we have two objects of the same type my number then they are equal if their value is equal so let's now go to the other class which is a little bit more complex uh, the class operation maybe i will first go to the class multiplication times so if i want to have an expression and allows me to multiply multiply two different numbers then it will be an extension of the superclass operation uh, to construct this operation we have to say that what is the symbol to be used which is the multiplication symbol and what is the neutral element of multiplication which is the value one uh, in addition to this we have to specify uh, how to compute this operation times and it's basically if i take two integers as input i will do the multiplication of these values and i will return these values and then again i have a similar equals object uh, equals method that will be defined on any uh, operation expression um, that's all that we can see in the times um, class because all of the other methods are actually inherited from the operation abstract class so what is uh, an arbitrary expression an ex expression is something that is composed of that can contain a list of arguments which are again expressions themselves an operation contains a symbol and a neutral value which are defined in one of the subclasses and we precise, precise what is the notation we're going to use when we need to convert it into string notation which is by default the infix notation but it could be another notation like prefix or postfix to construct an operation we are simply going to create uh, the operation and provide a new empty list of parameters as arguments to the operation and these arguments can be filled in later 
However, it is not possible to construct an operation that, that has a, a null value as arguments. In that case, we will throw an error, we will throw an exception of type illegal construction. So that's just a user-defined exception that we have defined to avoid creating operations that have uh, a null value as arguments. The operation to be computed itself is defined in the subclasses. Uh, how can we compute an expression? So if we have an expression and we want to compute it, uh, then we will basically iterate over all the arguments of the expression. I'm going to use the functional programming uh, capabilities that are present in Java since Java 8. This code has been written in Java 11, so it's definitely compatible with uh, the functional programming capabilities of Java that are defined in the stream uh, library of Java, which is important here. Java util stream. Uh, what we actually do here to compute an expression, so if we take the example of plus 3, 4, 5, we start uh, with a given value, for example 3. Uh, we, we keep this in some auxiliary, auxiliary variable. Uh, we add 4 to it, so we get 3 plus 4, which is 7. Uh, the result of this value, 7, uh, we add 5 to it, so we get 12, and we continue like this until all parameters have been processed and the result will be 12. So what does is, what is this actually uh, mean? We take the set of all arguments, we apply compute uh, one by one to the list of all arguments, and then uh, we reduce this to get one single resulting value, which is an interval, in, integer value that is the result of the computation. If you don't exactly know how this code works, I invite you to study the stream library of Java. It's also possible to change this code and to write this as a normal iteration, a normal for loop to do the same thing. In that case, the code would be more verbose. So I've preferred to use this more compact way of noting things also to show you that it's uh, easy and feasible to use functional programming capabilities in uh, Java code. Um, I'm not going over the other methods for counting the depth, the operations and the numbers. You can inspect the code by yourself. Uh, then here we have another code. Suppose I have some arbitrary expression. Suppose I want to print this or convert this into a string. How do I do this? Again, I will use the stream functionalities. I will take my list of arguments, I will uh, map them into, a, I will convert them into a stream, and then I will do a map where I convert all of the different arguments using the two string method to have strings. And then uh, basically now I have computed recursively, uh, computed strings for all of the expressions and the sub expressions. And then I can simply um, concatenate all the results by, for infix notation, opening the parentheses and then for each sub expression take the expression uh, convert into a string put a space put the symbol put another space and then close the parentheses for infix that's for infix notation uh, so for in infix notation we see that the symbol corresponding to the operation is put between each sub expression as part of the expression for prefix notation we first put the symbol of the operation and then only we put the parentheses between which we put the list of all parameters which are separated by a comma for the postfix this notation is the same the best way to understand this code is to look at it in more detail by yourself uh, of course another good way to try to uh, make it work is by trying to write some unit tests